Hey folks, it's Dan here from the Podcast Digest. Before this week's show begins, a quick message regarding audio quality on this week's episode. My interview with S. Anthony Thomas was conducted via Google Hangouts, and the audio quality, especially early on, was a little subpar. I think in the end, the interview and the conversation was excellent, and I truly hope that you enjoy it, and it does get better as the interview goes on. So thank you for your patience, and enjoy. Welcome back to the Podcast Digest, episode 22, TPD Says with S. Anthony. Thank you for taking the time once again to join me, Dan Lizette, here on the Podcast Digest. I truly hope you guys have been enjoying the show, especially the most recent episodes where I've been joined by some amazing guests. I've been thrilled by uh, how some of these shows have come out so far, and I really think that you guys are going to like what I've got coming up in this one. But before that, I wanted to remind you that if you missed any of the previous episodes, you can find them all, along with additional exclusive blog entries at the Podcast digest.info if you're not already you can contact me and the show on twitter at pod digest and of course on facebook facebook.com slash the podcast digest question comments requests can also be emailed the podcast digest at gmail.com is the way to do that and last but not least i do have a huge favor to ask you if you like this show would you please leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher? Guys, it literally takes 90 seconds, and it will help the show more than you can ever realize. It is really the best way for new listeners to find the show and come aboard. This week's guest, let's get right to it, is one I'm completely thrilled to be joined by, guys. He has one of the funniest, most outspoken comedy and commentary podcasts I've ever heard. He's also a solo host like me, so that's one of the reasons I really wanted to talk to him. He's 145, 146 episodes in at this point, and it is chock full of crazy fun and entertainment. Of course, I'm talking about the one and only host of the S. Anthony Says podcast, a show I reviewed way back on episode six of the Podcast Digest, along with the hit serial, by the way. S. Anthony Thomas, welcome to the Podcast Digest. Welcome to you. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lizette, for having me on. Well, thank you for taking the time. I, I really appreciate you joining me here today. What do you prefer? Is it S. or S. Anthony? Which do you prefer? Everybody calls me S. Anthony now. Uh, all I right. <laughs> S. Anthony, I, I'm a huge fan of the show. I was telling you beforehand. But for some strange reason, if somebody is just coming across this episode for the first time and they're not already subscribed to the, your podcast like they should be, can you tell everyone a little bit about what your show is about? Uh, well, the reason I call it's, it, my show is called S. Anthony Says, and, and I called it that. It, it's, it's a really re weird reason why I did that. I used to tag all of my email that way, uh, as Anthony says. And uh, essentially what the podcast is, is I want it to sound like I'm hanging out with a friend and they've already told their funny stories. We haven't seen each other in a couple of weeks. And now it's my turn to talk. That's what I want it to sound like. That's why I keep it as raw as possible. I could edit it and chop it up, but I want it to literally sound the same way it would sound if we were having a conversation and the podcast just happens to be recording when it's my turn to talk. <laughs> essentially, that's essentially the idea behind the podcast. Well, that's great. And before we talk about the podcast itself, which we're definitely going to do, I'd like to know more about you personally. And I think the listeners would as well. If they are fans of your show already, they know that you tell so many of your stories from a personal angle and a personal experience. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe where you grew up. What were the, the young S. Anthony days like? I uh, grew up in Philadelphia, just like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, <laughs> did most of my schooling here. Um, and the th thing about it is, I actually started to do stand up at 17 um, because I used to watch the comics on TV when I was a kid. And when I was a little boy, I, I gravitated toward the comedy programming. And I always thought it was powerful when I would see someone that could take a person that was feeling sad and through their ideas, through their words, make them smile again. I thought that was the most magical thing I'd ever seen in my life. And I knew, even as a little boy, that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I, I started to do. I, I used to make little plays when I was a kid. I used to record television programs. And then, <laughs> this, is, this is weird, but I would actually, say for the sake of argument, I was watching a rerun of Happy Days, okay? And there was a character that was not on that week until maybe the second act or whatever. I would literally write a script about what they were doing right up until the point where they showed up on the show. And I would do all of the voices on a, on a, on a recorder, take that, take the recording of Happy Days, edit that together. So now the Happy Days episode is an hour long with about a half an hour of what Ralph Mouth was doing. And then 
for the episode of Happy Days. And people like that. I mean, I, could, I, I just did it for me. I thought it was, I just, I was having fun. I just liked doing that. And as, as it went on, I would play it for people and I would take these little joke ideas to people. And even the bullies at school, and this is who were beating everyone's butt, would go, no, 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 not him. Not him. I want to hear what he says. I want to hear what he's got to say. Get them tapes. <laughs> and, and I went, I'm on to something here. I'm avoiding the buttocks whooping with ideas. This is good. And that's how it started. <laughs> that that is a great story. That that is a, one way to protect yourself on the school grounds. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned stand up, and that is uh, something that that I'm a huge fan of. You talked about, you know, and I put you in my top ten uh, episodes when you talked about Bill Cosby, and I know you also talked about George Carlin and Richard Pryor. And for anybody that appreciates stand up, those are you know sort of the, the the biggest names. And and I grew up watching George Carlin. I had the fortunate opportunity to actually see him live in concert when I was younger. And, and I still remember that show to this day. Talk to us about kind of stand up, what your experience has been in the stand up world. And, and uh, just for maybe for anyone listening to this, who, who kind of has some of the same aspirations. Uh, the thing about stand up comedy, it's like any kind of art. You literally better love it because rejection is part of it. And in the beginning, when you're learning your craft, you are being rejected uh, by about 50, 60, 100 people who are literally sitting there in a chair judging you. And in the beginning, it's hard. Oh, it's – especially for – I was 17 at the time. It was It's so hard to learn how to do it because you're essentially learning how to do something that there's really no class for in front of strangers. And so if you love to do stand-up, do it because you love to do it. The money thing and all of that kind of stuff, that'll come. But the love of it has to be there first because it's very, very difficult. But once you master the techniques, it's all about writing jokes, and then it's just fun. It is really just fun. Uh, regarding uh, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, and Bill Cosby, I personally think of those three. Uh, they're on my Mount Rushmore of stand-up comedy. Um, I, my favorite is Richard Pryor. My number, my 1A is George Carlin, and 1AA is Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and so, because I can't separate them, the, the level of brilliance of all three of those performers, you can't say well, you can't say one is technically better than the other because they all have the full skill set. You can't say Richard Pryor is—I mean, what people say it—he's kind of like Jimi Hendrix. Like, who's the best guitar player? I don't care which. I don't need to hear what you. It's Jimi Hendrix. Shut up. You know, it's like that. But with those three guys, just just the brilliance and the skill. Because I was familiar with their work intimately from listening to literally everything they did, I could listen to the evolution, even though this is long after the evolution had already taken place. And I could see that they all have the complete skill set. But George decided he wanted to go a little more political in the 70s. And Bill Cosby wanted to go family. And Richard Pryor decided to be very introspective. And I liked all three of those techniques and those three choices. But I thought as a comic, I don't have to choose one. <laughs> and I'm not going to choose one. I'm going to do all three because I like all three. And I didn't see anybody else that was doing all three. They, everybody kind of chooses one. I'm like, why would you want to choose one? I want to talk about politics. I'm going to talk about politics. And if I want to talk about my family, I'm going to talk about my family. And if I want to talk about what happened to me sitting in this chair right now, I'm going to talk about that. You know. So, so they would influence me separately. But the simple fact that they all they each had the complete skill set inspired me to go, I, I want to do all three of those things. All three. And that was what I thought was great about your, your, your Mount Rushmore representation with those three was because I do consider them so different in terms of where they landed on the spectrum, right? Like you just spelled out, they all sort of took a different style or a different approach, but what they did in those styles was some of the best that's ever been done in terms of, you know, it's it always seemed to me, and, and I could be wrong here, but this is just, you know, an, an observer. Pryor seemed to be able to go off the cuff a lot more, like, you know, more read and react and this, that, and the other. And you could tell certainly with Carlin and Cosby, this was very prescriptive. They had these things routine down. And like you said, the, the political commentary that Carlin would do was astronomical. And uh, Cosby always looked at it as a phenomenal storyteller. And uh, Cosby was one that I was addicted to. You know, I used to get the tapes from the library 
library, bring them home, check them out for the 14 days, but I would record them over and then uh, I would I would have them at home and 200 miles per hour is one that I listened to so many times from Bill Cosby and uh, you know, so that that was how I knew that that I was in for the long haul with your podcast, uh, as Anthony. When when you started talking about those three, I said, "Oh, this guy, he thinks like me." Th- those were excellent choices. Yeah, that should be very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting, I'll, I'll put you on the spot because we talked about your Mount Rushmore, as you probably know. Mount Rushmore's four, mm-hmm. and that's three. So, if you had to throw a fourth comedian up on your Mount Rushmore, who might that be? Uh, you know what? I would have answered this differently a little a few years ago, but I would have to put – oh, jeez. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put Dave Chappelle on there. There you go. I would. It, 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 it's between Chappelle and Rock. Rock is, is a little – like Chappelle is so flexible in what he does um, because he talks about so many weird things, and he, he's just weird, and I like that. With Rock, it's very – okay, this is exactly what's going to happen, and I'm talking. I'm going to spell it out. He always – Tells you what he's going to talk about, talks about it, tells you again, talks about it again, and then ties it all up with a bow. Dave Chappelle, you have no idea what the hell he's going to say. <laughs> he'll be talking about one thing, and he'll go, that's enough of that, and then he'll just go veer off into something else. And I've seen them both in clubs early on, and I, I, you could kind of – like before Chris Rock was Chris Rock, you could see flashes of what you see now. Uh, before Dave was Chappelle was Dave Chappelle, you, know, you could see flashes of what he was to become. And I would have to put him there because if you notice, remember, they both had successful, highly successful, revered television programs. Chris Rocks was on HBO and Dave Chappelle's obviously Comedy Central. I loved both shows, but I had a special kinship with Chappelle because he was just weird. (laughs) So that's that's why he's there. If I could expand Mount Rushmore to five people, Mr. Chris Rock would be on there. There you go. I think all of those are great choices for sure. I no argument from me on any of those. That's for sure. No argument from me. So let's go back to your podcast days, as Anthony. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the history of your show. Now, I've not listened to every episode from the back catalog, only because, as I mentioned, uh, over 140 episodes in. That that's a lot of listening, but I'm working on it. Uh, talk a little bit about the show, kind of how it's changed over the time, sort of maybe where you began, where you find yourself today, sort of how has the show evolved, and um, you know what were some of the thought processes behind some of those those things you may have changed uh in the, this it was really weird because podcasting to me literally i i enjoyed them like right now i have uh, you know your podcast and a few other friends podcast friends that via podcasting that i listen to on a regular basis and i try to make sure i listen to everybody which is why i, I get behind a little because there's like 15 or 20 podcasts i'm trying to catch up on but the first one i just I literally was why I, I was wanting to do a, a one person play, but I know myself well enough to know I write too much stuff uh, and I would get bored really quickly. And also the, it costs a lot to pay for insurance for a small theater. So, <laughs> so and I, I thought, you know, I don't want to just, cause in stand up, essentially, essentially with stand up, you are going to someone else's venue. There are rules there. They may not be big rules, but there are rules there. And you have to honor them, and just justifiably so. And I thought, oh, man, I, t- I don't just want to do jokes all the time. I just because if I go to a club, if I want to talk about something serious that I thought think people would find interesting, you know, I, that's better for a theater. But to do a theater, I'd have to pay for. You know, you need a million dollars of insurance, even for these little tiny stinky theaters. They want, you know, and I'm like, I'm not. Wait a minute, but I'm not juggling fire here. What the hell are you talking about? So I said, well, I, well, maybe podcasting. And I started to listen to a few, and I went, whoa, there you go. So I just started clicking around to see who had podcasts, and I found out how they did their podcast, and I went, I'm going to do that. In the beginning, well, see, on the stand-up stage, I can pick up the mic and talk for as long as I want to and, and, and be fine because I've been doing that for a billion and a half years. But podcasting was a little different. It's a little more intimidating, surprisingly. You sitting with the mic in a room. If you put 300 people in front of me, I'm fine. You put me in the room with one microphone and uh, <laughs> you know, it turns into that. So, uh, so the first podcasts were short. Um, some of them, if you look at the first few, five minutes, seven minutes, 23 minutes, 17 minutes. And they were, I just like, what am I thinking about right now? I'll talk about that. There, wasn't this, there were no outlines. There was no sound effects. I got rid of the sound effects, by the way. And I thought about, and as I as I went 
further and further, it became easier to me to put the thought in a in a more of a podcast format than in the stand-up format. And stand-up is like, get to point A, point B. Let's go. Come on. Come here. Here. No, let's go. Move it. Move it. Step on the gas. Let's go. In podcasting, it's it's comfort type of art. People like to be comfortable with you. They want to like you. When I get emails about people, when I when I did my last show, they would go, man, I love those jokes. That was some good stuff you did. When you get compliments in the podcast, I get compliments on podcasts like, I love you. I like you. I like listening to you. They don't. They, they like the material, but they like you. And I went, man, that is, hmm. okay, that's a better compliment. Because <laughs> once you heard the joke, you don't want to hear it again. But I'm, I'm still going to be S. Anthony tomorrow, <laughs> you know. And so I, I, it, it got easier and easier. And as it got easier, I, just like anything else, when you start to master the techniques, you can concentrate on the on the on the on the material. And when you can forget about the techniques and just work on the material, there's depth that comes with that. Inherently, there's depth that comes with that and an ease that comes with it. And all of a sudden now the shows are an hour and an hour and a half because now I know how to do it. And it's comfortable and it's fun and I look forward to doing it. And when I'm done, I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> I said, Let's start recording some stuff for next week already. Literally after it's done, the second it's up, I go, and now it's time to start writing the next one. Literally. And I didn't think it would be possible to love this as much as I do and the people that do it as much as I do because there's a lot of respect there. All right. As you mentioned a lot of sort of how you were coming up with some of the uh, topics that you were changing and, and, and that you had evolved from maybe a shorter show to a longer show. And I'm always curious how folks sort of come up with their content, especially yours. You feature so many different segments and you have covered such a gamut of topics just in maybe the 30 percent of the catalog I've had a chance to listen to. But obviously current events play a part in what you're talking about. But what is sort of that thought process that you go through on on each of these segments, what you include? Maybe tell us a little bit about how that's like. Um, I use very, it's very similar to the, uh, to the stand up techniques. And so far as I tend, I always would watch people write jokes and, and see how they put them together. And I always thought, you know, it's, to me, it's funnier if you just talk about what you actually saw and push it through the filter that is you, you know, um, I did a seg segment about, um, in the last week about the FedEx driver who got a ticket. And so, and that literally, I went home and recorded that segment because I was laughing. I'm sitting there going, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, as, as I have to record this right now because sometimes you'll see things that are just absurd. And I did not understand it. I literally was looking out the window going, how do you give a FedEx driver a ticket? And, then that's, and that's, when I, that's when I thought, well, you know, if you really think about it, sometimes they leave their names on the ticket. And this is a FedEx driver in this area, which means... This FedEx driver probably is in your area. Wouldn't it be hilarious if the guy is delivering something, realizing oh, that's the woman that gave me a ticket? <laughs> Let's see if she gets her stuff. <laughs> you know, and that's how this segment came about. When it comes to things like that, it's usually something I see during my travels, and I go, "Oh, I gotta talk about that. That's just hilarious." You know, uh, regarding the, the social commentary things. Um, as you know, person, from personal experience, I'm active on Twitter, so I'm always looking at the news, and sometimes I'll see things. Because you, 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 we were talking about the, the Bill Cosby segment, and that one was one of the things that really got to me the, the most because I, I literally sat, sat there and I thought, really? Because it's a tragedy. No, this, this is one of those situations where, say for the sake of argument, you're accused of something, and you are just 100% innocent – and you can prove that you're innocent. Now, it's horrible that you had the accusation, but you can go, well, you said I stole that or blew that up, but I have a film of me, right? If you watch this film, you'll see that I'm at the Padres game and I couldn't have done it. And then everyone goes, oh, it's clear cut that he didn't do it. There's no reason to destroy him in the social media. There's no reason to follow him around saying he did this or that. But when it's not, when it's not cut and dry, the poison is there permanently. And when I saw this guy, someone who was my, you know, one AA <laughs> who, who, on Mount Rushmore, and I thought, if you did this and you put yourself up as, you know, I think you should be this way and how don't you put your pants up and you need to do this and you're doing what you're accused of doing and you're lecturing other people? Really? On the other hand, 
imagine for the sake of argument that he actually didn't do that. Just, just you know, hypothetically, how evil is that? <laughs> you know, to have that kind of a conspiracy. Well, like, I don't know what you want to do today. You want to destroy an icon? Yeah, me too. Fantastic. Let's get him. You know, just, you know. <laughs> so when I looked at when I looked at that, I thought, wow, this is this is a tragedy. No matter what happens, it's horrible. An icon who probably helped millions of people. Not just with enjoyment, but with things he would have probably done behind the scenes. Oh, you know, he's, he turned it out to be a, a piece of you know what. On the other hand, if he didn't do it, which it looks like he did, if he didn't, then you got 30 people who were pieces of you know what who were trying to take down someone who didn't do anything. And I thought, man, this is, I'm either going to have people write me going, that was great, man, or you stink. <laughs> And I was waiting for the email, and all of a sudden, bing, 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 bing. I mean, here we go. Let me open his email. Oh, thank goodness. And it was all, good job, man. Good job. Yeah, me too. I thought the same thing. And I went, thank goodness. Because I, I mean, when, I, when, you, when the email starts, because my email notifications go, bing, bing. When that starts happening a lot, you're going, oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> and fortunately, it was positive. Uh, but that's basically what it is. I, I see something and there's a visceral reaction. I don't want to get to what I'm feeling in its most raw state first before I, I, I pull back and look at it in a more analytical fashion because that's where the comedy is. And sometimes that means you'll record in your car. I know there was one episode you did sev- several episodes back. I'm trying to remember, but it, it seemed to me from from your storytelling that day, there was somebody outside. <laughs> was it mowing the lawn or with a leaf blower or something? You had to keep rolling up the window and rolling down the window. That drove me insane. <laughs> uh, I was I was I was driving someone someplace, and I'm sitting there going, I should I was I literally had scheduled to be home recording something, another segment that I, that I still have sitting around that I'm going to do at a later date. And I was sitting there going, you know what? There's about five or six things I want to talk about. And I decided I'm going to do it here. I'm it's taking so long in the store. And I had my Zoom H1 in my pocket, which I always do now. I didn't see the, oh, that's right. I just put a fresh battery in it. Let's start talking. And then this guy comes in and he's vacuuming. Vacuuming. Just, that's what it was. <laughs> it was the loudest vacuum in history. I get, I get, I get, I'm sitting there going, I vacuum my car at plenty of car washes. They have never been that loud. You know, I'm sitting there and he's, and I looked over while he was vacuuming. The car did not look like it needed to be vacuumed. <laughs> what are you vacuuming? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. And I, I looked at him and he smiled and he smiled at me as if to say, yeah, look how good my car looks. And I'm looking at him going, you're going to suck your car into the van so that you, <laughs> if you don't stop. And he literally, and here's the thing, it costs about a buck fifty for every three minutes. So I think he probably put in, I don't know, seven or eight million dollars in coins <laughs> into that stupid machine. <laughs> I just couldn't believe him sitting there going, I keep my car meticulously clean. I have time left on the vacuum when I'm done. He is he is as meticulous as I am. Your car could not be that dirty unless you are uh, Dexter, uh, something like that. <laughs> you know, there's no way. And uh, and that was one of the things that I found amusing because I was I was I was like, you know, I'm gonna talk about some serious things, man. I'm gonna make a serious point. Yeah, this segment was probably gonna be about a half an hour. I'm gonna make this serious point. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> And that was that was really about that segment that that really had me rolling was and and I'll be honest with you, Cynthia, I, I I I'm not even recalling exactly the topic. All I remember was you trying to work through it, and you kept pointing out this guy with the vacuum and rolling up the windows and rolling down the windows. Oh, here he comes back again, and it was just one of those ones that obviously happened completely on accident. But I can tell you, as a listener, I was rolling over you just struggling to get through this segment with the guy with the vacuum. It was great. I mean, I thought it was really entertaining. If you wouldn't see my face, I was trying not to laugh into the microphone. because I, I, That's one of the things I liked about, because in the beginning I used the microphone that was attached to, I bought a microphone for the computer. Then I was away from the home and I couldn't get back. So I was using a digital recorder that was not up to par. And then I said, that's it. I'm just buying some some Zoom recorders. I, I'm just buying them. Screw it. So I bought the Zoom recorders, and I could, was blown away by the sound quality and the size of the Zoom 1. I, I, I use a Zoom 4 for everything else. So I'm, 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 I'm using this, this recorder, and I'm saying this sound quality is 
I'm in the car and it sounds good. All right, click. <laughs> I'll do something while I'm in the car. And it's, I mean, it's still me talking. I don't have, I don't need the notes in front of me. I know what I wrote down, you know. And uh, I, I, I was saying to somebody before they go, "Are you gonna do any more stuff from your car?" I said, "That Zoom one is always in my pocket." Was that going in the car? Absolutely. <laughs> Especially if I see something interesting. And you know, that actually segues to another another thing I wanted to ask you about. I mean, as you mentioned, you're putting out. On average, we'll say on average, about an hour a week at this point, usually, and uh, I think it's about four, three to five segments, I guess, is, is sort of how you, you wind it up. So how much of this would you say is scripted? You mentioned outline beforehand, but it does seem to be like you kind of start riffing a little bit, almost riffing on yourself. You'll get into secondary voices and pull yourself back <laughs> like you took something too far and that got weird, didn't it? And so how much of this do you kind of do you kind of just outline the structure of what you're presenting or is, or is it? A detail or how, what's that process like if it was in the beginning it was scripted out in outline form as i got as i learned how to how to podcast now i usually this a podcast segment usually starts out with fedex guy and that's it <laughs> <laughs> whereas before i would literally write Oh, the lady was at FedEx and she had an attendant and then she did this and that happened and then this happened and I think I should use this angle and I should go and do this voice and do this voice. Now it's just like, new FedEx guy, click record. And, you know, because I, I notice that I, I feel, I can, I feel more comfortable veering off into something else if I don't use as much of a script. As a stand-up comic, I, I write material, but as everyone who, who knows me personally knows, they always go, you know, doggone well, you're not going to say any of that. You're never going to say, you're going to say about 10% of that. And you know, and I go, yeah, pretty much. So as of now, in the beginning, I would say 70% of it was scripted. Now it's uh, 10% at most. And people like, people, the, the one that I did, this, this, there was an episode I did 133. It was about the, the cat, the cat that was trying to kill me. Uh, I <laughs> think I remember this one. Segment. That is the, the, it was the cat with the, with the hand grenades and everything. That's episode 133. That is still, by far, the most popular episode I have ever done. And the most popular segment I have ever done was recorded. I pressed the record. I said, I want to, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ad lib a story about something. I'm just going to press record and start talking. And that's how that segment happened. There was no thought in that segment at all. And I had nothing written down, did not know I was going to be talking about cats when I started recording the segment. And it turned into this weird thing about a cat trying to kill me, uh, <laughs> you know, a cat getting jealous that I was paying too much attention to my own girlfriend trying to blow me up and cutting the brakes on my car. And, you know, and, and, I, and I'm sitting there going, I hope people don't think that's too weird. I just maybe I won't put that one on there. And what happens? Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> <laughs> It was the only thing that got, that was the only thing that got more immediate email responses and, and responses more than Cosby. That wow. one, I mean, it, it, I mean that one blows Cosby away. And my second most popular segment is less than one half as popular as that one, and it's still going strong. It's like people will listen to the new one, and then people will go, "Why don't you listen to 133?" People refer to it as 133. <laughs> they didn't even say the title. I don't remember what the title is. They go, I like 133, man. I downloaded 133. I took it to work. You need people in the office love it. <laughs> I was like, and all of this from something where I literally went, I'm just going to start talking to them, press record, see what happens. Because I just wanted to rip some ideas out. So let me ask you, Anthony, you mentioned in terms of how you script things for the podcast, or, and nowadays you're hardly doing that, and, and stand-up. Can you kind of compare and contrast those worlds? Do you feel like in stand-up you need a little bit more scripting, or is a lot of this, I'll call it improv-type style, has that made its way into sort of your, your stand-up act as well, where you kind of you know, kind of now trust yourself, if you will, to kind of riff on, on, on any type of subject that kind of comes through your head? It's actually the reverse. Ah. Um, I felt ridiculously comfortable in stand up in the beginning. I was like Harlan. Well, I, I'm talking about down to the commas. I mean, I, I literally could walk on stage at that point and go, this is going to be seven minutes and 15 seconds. And I'd be off by about three or four seconds at the most. Um, because I knew what, where all the pauses were. I knew what I was going to do. And occasionally I'd ad lib something and they would laugh 10 times louder. And I would go, huh? And I said, okay, I'm going to ad lib a little more. And, they would, and, and then the ad libs basically, was the ad libs did a home invasion. 
They kick the door and I listen, structured jokes, get out. This is our territory now. A couple of you can stay. You, 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 sit down. You can stay. But this is our house now. You're guests. Stay away from the refrigerator without asking us. And so, so I still script things out. But as a safety net, and the thing is about stand-up is in podcasting, you can be hilarious and you can be interesting. The people want you to be one of those. In stand-up, you're hilarious or you're not working. <laughs> you know, right. so if you do something even if it's interesting go, that was interesting but we're never booking you again but it was interesting to watch that it was pretty interesting. <laughs> so it, it was really it was really difficult because i started thinking if i can stand on the stage in front of people that paid and I'm, i can i feel comfortable creating something on the fly when i when there's no take backs there's no editing i can certainly do the same thing when i can go oh, that blows and hit the button and erase the whole thing and with that being the case there was a really a gigantic feeling of liberation with that because if it stinks you're never going to hear it <laughs> i will erase it unfortunately i haven't had to do that but but it's like and also i i want it to be and i think with podcasting i think the one thing one little thing about the new media podcasting being the king of this in my, my estimation is a simple fact that you know like when cable when cable splintered and you had so many different uh, channels you know, you can now find exactly what you want. It doesn't matter if the entire country is watching it. You and three million people are watching that, and that's fine. It's yours. You have that feeling of, this is our band. It's not going commercial, man. This band is ours, man. They're not going to be going to the Billboard Awards and selling out, man. This is ours, man. And that's what podcasting is. You don't need to have 10 million people listening to your podcast. If you have 50,000 people or 100,000 people or 1 million people, you were like Joe Rogan or Bill Burr or somebody like that, that's a huge audience. And that's enough to get done what you need to get done. So I like, the, I like, that, I like that aspect of it. The, the, the whole feeling of I can do whatever I want to do and the people that like it will come to it and stay listening and stay with it. The people that don't, I'll never know they exist because they'll either listen to it or they won't, and I like it that way, you know. And in terms of the the terms of the the feedback from everyone, S. Anthony, we've we've touched on it a couple of times, but how has sort of the feedback been from your SAS fam? I'll borrow your term, your SAS fam. Uh, in terms of all the listeners, like you said, you're very active on social media, and you talked about those emails dinging in and. Tell me about that listener interaction. How satisfying has that been? What type of feedback? Have, has there ever been an instance where, you know, they've hit you over the head for something or they've really raised you up for something? How's that experience been? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> whenever I talk about, when I talked about Ferguson, <laughs> and the funny thing about it was if some people just go this, that, this, that, and if they disagree, even if they disagree passionately, I'm okay with that. I'm, I, I even said to a couple, said, listen, we are going to have to agree to disagree, but I just, I'll just i be honest with you. The fact that you said the things you said and raised the points that you raised means you listened to an hour and a half of me talking, and I'm honored by that. He says, we can disagree. That's fine. I have friends now who think Mitt Romney would have been a fantastic president, who think George Bush was a fantastic, you know, and I don't. So, but we, I still love the people just because we disagree on something. So I don't, I don't mind that. Uh, trolls, I ignore those completely. You know, that, that, that means nothing to me. Uh, they, they literally don't even move the needle, whether it be in social media or on the podcast. For the most part, though, people can tell that I'm being really sincere. And literally, I'm, tell, I'm telling you, all kidding aside, it's 99.9% .9 positive, which shocked me. Even when I talk about something, I know I'm going to get it. Then it's 94% positive. You know, people go, I disagree with you, but that crap was funny. I know that I don't like what you, I don't like your point of view. I hate your politics, but yes, man, that was great, man. Even though your politics stink, but the show was good. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, funny how you had the word stink and good in the same sentence. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> And, and I'll tell you, folks, if you've not yet subscribed to S. Anthony's show, you will get a lot of this. I mean, and, and he said it on some of his other shows. I mean, I would say an overwhelming majority of your segments are that comedy and entertainment base that we've been talking about with the car and the vacuum and the cat. You know, I would say that is a bulk of your content. But you do take these times to do sort of social commentary. And I'll tell you what, at first when I was listening, I was a little like, wow, he's kind of getting into it. But then as I kind of got accustomed to it, I, I really grew to respect 
respect your point of view. You know, I don't necessarily agree with every word you say, but I agree overwhelmingly with what you're saying. And I think, and folks, again, if you've not listened to, to S. Anthony's show, whether you agree or disagree, he's going to present it in an extraordinary intellectual way that, that actually makes really good common sense observations. And like you said, if you, uh, you know, agree or don't agree, the next segment will probably be back to the entertainment. And uh, I, I think it makes it for a, sort of that full spectrum experience in terms of what you get with your show. And, and I, for one, really enjoy that. Well, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Um, I'm, I'm, we're going to have to discuss uh, you not agreeing with every word that I said. We're going to have to talk about that <laughs> after the show, damn it. <laughs> does, does that jeopardize my SAS fam credentials? <laughs> how, how dare you? You're just gonna, you're gonna, I'm going to take the M off. You're going to be SAS fa for about a week. <laughs> you get the M back. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. And we've we've been talking about feedback. We've been talking about how you choose uh, what you put on the show. I and, and this this question sort of just popped into my mind. You talk a lot about. I'm assuming most of them are past relationships uh, and, or friends. Um, you're, I, I'm thinking about the episode where you talked about the guy who had the uh, incident in his pants. I. <laughs> I remember this one from a, a few weeks back. Previous relationships, friends, anything like that. Has anybody ever heard sort of that conversation? And, and while I know you're very careful about not naming names, has anybody ever come back to you and said, look, I know that was me. Have you ever had that happen? They've all heard themselves. <laughs> they've all recognized themselves. And they've all – the funny thing about it is most of my friends I've had – for such a long time that we've had this discussion before. They said, you can talk about any – he said, listen, dude, I know that if I if something dopey happens, it's like you finding money on the street. I can't spend that money, but I love you, so you can spend it. Talk about what – I don't care what happens. You can talk about whatever you want. If you think it will make me look like an idiot, take my name off. I said, dude, <laughs> I, I won't use any names. Yeah. And, and the funny thing about it is this is one, this is one conceit, and I will, I will admit to this. Sometimes I will, you know, when you watch a television movie and they'll take two different things that happen and push them together, um, I will change certain things in certain time periods and I'll even change the sex of someone because even though they've given me permission to talk about these things, I still feel the need to protect them, even though they have all literally to a person going, I know what you do. Go ahead. I don't mind, but I will protect them. But they've all, I mean, literally, except for a couple of ex-girlfriends I have, I've lost contact with, which is why I'm ve- I really changed a few things <laughs> just in <laughs> case. But, um, but, but they've literally, they've all, every single one of them said, 124, right? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> they, they, they said, all right, it was funny. It was good. It was good. You know, so that, that's 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 the answer, the answer to that question. They've all done it. They've all heard themselves <laughs> and recognized themselves. And I would, I think it would be great sometimes if, if even some of the strangers you call out were to actually kind of figure it out and come back around. I remember several weeks back again, and I love this story. And, and folks, I'll just point this one out. And, and as Anthony, maybe you can highlight the, the number because it's not jumping to memory right now. But I loved your story about, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think it was a father-son cable installer team that came in. And you were talking to them and kind of the father was sort of off in the distance where the son was a little more you know, talkative. And then eventually the father <laughs> And it came around, and uh, I loved that story. I thought it not only was it hilarious, but you had like this really good kind of social commentary in there about sort of like first impressions and what somebody would think. And I thought it was a great story, and it was hilarious too. But you know, it would be nice if those guys kind of realized that they were you know personified on a podcast. Yeah, well, that was one of the ones where I changed the profession. Everything else was true, but I changed the job. Uh, <laughs> so I went. <laughs> Uh, I don't know uh, that even now I'm not going to say what they actually did. Right, said, right, uh, right. This service may be needed again, uh, but I, but the <laughs> thing, but the thing about it was really weird to see the change in someone because I, I've seen it happen in many cases where you see people and they think in one way and then new information comes and they realize, oh, I was inaccurate. And I have respect for people, even if it was someone who, who in this, you, you're familiar with the segment, who th- thought a certain way. If they can then go, you know what, I, I got to rethink this. I got to rethink this because everybody has some kind of prejudice. It may be a very, really tiny one. 
you know, but it, but but you have it, and it, it doesn't even have anything to do necessarily with race. It could be, uh, you know, uh, the way someone looks. It could be their, 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 the amount of money they have or something like that. And when I noticed it in myself, when it was it was really slight with this with the homeless guy, and I went, ah, I said, dude, you can't be. Come on, just get the guy a dollar, and then talk to him like a human being, because he is a human being. He's a human being that right now doesn't have any money. But there was a time when you almost got were sleeping on the streets in San Francisco when you moved there. So he could be, you could be that guy, and wouldn't you want someone to treat you like a human being? So I always do that. So when I, when I so when it came to something like that. I know I'm going to change a few things. I will never change the essence of the story. I will never change what actually happened, but I will change the profession. <laughs> you know, I'll change so the profession that, in a second. So that makes me want to ask, you, as Anthony, was was the lady an actual McDonald's drive through person or was it Wendy's? <laughs> uh, no, that, that was actually McDonald's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's, a, that's from a recent episode, and that's another segment I really enjoyed. That one was great. Now, no, and let me tell you this. Not only was that McDonald's, not only was that 100% true down to the grunts that she gave me, <laughs> that she still – she actually, I actually went to McDonald's yesterday, that same McDonald's. She's still <laughs> working there, and now after a year and a half, I get high ass. <laughs> a year and a half. And then they go up. <laughs> Now she greets me by high ass. I'm like, oh, it took a year and a half, really. <laughs> oh, you got. I I would say you should bring this thing full circle, as Anthony. You should p be playing that segment on your podcast through your car while you're driving through the drive-through. That would be full circle right there. Well, if full circle means someone spitting in my in my coffee. <laughs> I don't even want my spit in my coffee. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We could go back and forth for this a long time because there are, there are segment after segment after segment that I've really enjoyed from the show, guys. And, and as I've mentioned, if, if you haven't gone and searched for this podcast yet, you need to do it. You need to be listening to As Anthony Says. It is wildly entertaining, and, and I thoroughly enjoy it. It is a must listen. You, you mentioned 15 or 20 shows that you'd subscribe to. Uh, as Anthony, my, my, my subscription right now, I'm over 85 podcasts. I'm subscribed to, but I will tell you, when yours drops every single week, I make sure that I immediately move that to the top of my playlist, and within 24 hours, I've listened to it because I do enjoy it that much. That is what I, I really, really appreciate that. I really, really do, because uh, I, I respect what you do, you know, and like I said, it's, it, when you see someone who, who, like you said before, you were talking about solo podcasters, it's 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 not easy to do that. Right. <laughs> it really, yep. It's not easy to do that. And I know what your workload has got to be now because people realize that you have a good show. So the fact that your show is enjoyable and it has good information, now you're going to be deluged with, I don't listen to my podcast. <laughs> yes. I recorded, but how about next week? I mean, just wait about 20 episodes until you know what, the microphone technique first. <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, I. I, and I have had that experience. I, I, I got a message just this week, somebody telling me their podcast is debuting in February. Would you check it out? That type of thing. I, I, I get this fairly regularly, but that's okay. I mean, it's, it's actually, you know, I think discovery uh, of new shows is one of the largest challenges for podcasters. And one of the reasons that motivated me to start the show was to help somebody just breaking into listening to podcasts to help them discover some of the best out there. So it's okay if I keep receiving those type of things. I just have tried to put forward that there's a limit to my time. There's a limit for my ability to mm -hmm. check out new things. And quite frankly, there's a lot that I'm already subscribed to that I'm not going to miss, you know, your show being one of them. I'm not bumping the shows I enjoy just because I'm trying to check out as many new things as I possibly can. But I'm, let me, I appreciate that. let me ask you about the, fu the, the future S Anthony. We, 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 we can talk about the show, but, but you've alluded to it on your show a couple different times. And uh, I don't want you to divulge anything you can't, but yourself personally and, and your stand up or any other future plans, is there anything that you could maybe give our listeners a hint on that, that might be in say 2015 for you personally? Yeah, I'm actually writing an entirely new show. I'm doing if you if you've ever seen the movie uh, Jerry Seinfeld comedian, have you ever seen that one? No, I don't believe really so. it. You 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 would love it. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've, I think I've seen it 714 times. Um, <laughs> it's essentially he just jettisoned this ent entire act that he did before that the one that was up until when he got the show finished the show Seinfeld, and he decided to write an entirely different show. 
when I saw that, I thought, because I was always one of those guys that, say I would write an hour and a half of stuff that worked, and then I would begin cycling in material, and it would be very Jenga-like when, you know, you, you take one piece in and you push another piece out the backside, and as you added pieces, you would jettison another piece, and then by the end of the next year, it's an entirely different show, but it was, it was slowly evolving into a different show. But I wanted to do something different. I, was, I thought, you know, I'm just dumping everything that I just wrote, and I'm not doing anything that, I ha that I'm not writing right now. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do what I'm writing right now, I want to do new stuff. I want to, I don't want it to evolve. I want it to appear, you know, and I've never done that before. So that's a huge challenge because there's always a temptation. I got about five hours of material. I can go back and throw one of these in there. I mean, come on, why not go back and do some of that old stuff, you know, <laughs> but I, I, I've challenged myself. I said, no, nah, not, you're not, I don't, you're not even going to do a hiccup that was, that you wrote before you made this decision. Nothing. It's all going to be new, which is why it's taking longer. And um, that's what I want to do. I just want to, I noticed that my one of my heroes, as we spoke about in the beginning, was George Carlin. And what did he do? And I never thought about that. I just enjoyed the shows. He would write an hour and a half of stuff, perform it. Well, that's it for that. <laughs> and then he'd go off for six months, write another one. And then here it is another one. A year and a half later, here's another one. And then a year and a half later, here's another one. And I thought, that's a really wonderful way to live. It's Until podcasting, it was the thing I loved to do absolutely the most by far. Podcasting is right there. And if I could do that, if I could just have a nice following that comes to see me and build and I want to build a nice audience for the podcast, I don't care if I get a television series or a movie. I don't care. If it happens, great, but I don't need it. Well, actually I do need it. That built a bank. But I don't <laughs> but, but I don't I don't need it. I don't need it so far as artistically. If I can just do my podcast and perform stand up, I don't need to be on any of those other shows. It would be great. I'm going to I'm going to attempt it, but it's not I'm not gonna go I've never been on these shows. Everything I've ever done, the people who said they like, doesn't count, sucks. Let me set my computer on fire. Poof, what it was, give me a sledgehammer. Let me smash this microphone. I don't need it. Smash. Give me a, put all the jokes in there. Let me give me a lighter fluid. That's it. Click. Whoosh. <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. But I realized, you know, just like anything else, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, you get to the point where you're making a good living doing just the podcast digest and whatever things built off of that. What's better than that? I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. That would be excellent. Speaking so the for the show, for the podcast itself, uh, you know, we mentioned 145, 146 episodes and what are the next one forty five looking for? What are we in for? Is as everyone who's listening to this, I'm sure, is subscribing right now. What what are they in for? First of all, the episodes as as people that have already listened to have, have noticed, have gotten noticeably weirder as they've gone along and uh, as of, as uh, I have. And uh, that's going to continue. Uh, <laughs> but what I wanted to do, I wanted to do, uh, because I, I was afraid of making too many changes in the beginning, because I wanted to do, I, people, I have comics calling me now that are old friends that want to be on the show. And I said, they said, if we do this, and I explained to them what the show was, even though they've heard it, I said, you know what I, the idea behind the show is? It's, it's essentially, like I said in the beginning of this, it's just, it's it's the equivalent of me hanging out with a close friend that I like, someone whose company I enjoy. I listen to your stories and enjoy them, and now it's my turn to talk. Well, in this instance, if you come on the show, what's going to be a little different? It's going to be me actually adding the part where the friend did stuff with someone. <laughs> right, story. right. So it's basically going to be I want the audience to be the third friend who, and the show would be these two people talking, but that show ends before that person gets a chance to talk. I'm not going to be interviewing anyone like that. And I wanted to hang out with comics and people that I liked that I thought would be interesting to the audience because now, after a while, they kind of trust you with a quality, with a certain level of quality, and I don't want to disappoint them. So essentially, it's going to evolve into – it's going to be me, obviously, because I think people probably, probably kind of want to hear you as, as a solo podcast. They want to hear mostly you. But I wanted to evolve into bringing in people that I thought were interesting and fun – that could hang out, you know, and just, like, it'd be, like if you had a, a friend that's great and he's cool, he's the best, you love him, he's the greatest, and then he goes, you're going to love this guy. He's coming to the game with us. And then you meet this guy, and, and he's the greatest. That's what I wanted to be like. Hey, he's cool, too. I like that guy. That's what I wanted to turn into because those are the kind of things that you can just relax into and be comfortable with. And I think that sounds awesome. I mean, exactly like what you said, when you're – talking about these things it would be 
great to hear somebody else kind of you know riff on what you're saying and then you guys have a back and forth i mean i could see that being you know almost a whole episode in terms of if somebody is kind of feeding you if you were feeding the fire as as you go on about a particular subject i think that would be excellent and i for one would would love to hear you know how that would work out on, on the podcast where do you meet the nutcases that i know oh, <laughs> Where do you meet? Uh, where do you meet my the people that I know and like? Uh, you you're going. He just likes people nuts like him. He just he just likes people who are weird like he is. And the answer to that is yes, yes I do. <laughs> so, I think uh, if you I think if you bring. I think if you bring folks on, you should start uh, referencing back as as uh, anonymous uh, as anonymously described in episode ninety seven. Now I'd like to introduce you to you know, start putting names with faces, so to speak. I talked about him once before, you know. Oh, yeah, oh that that guy that came to my house. Oh, you, I don't know if you heard that one. There was a guy that came to my house. He he was going to the gym, and he sat on my toilet without drying himself. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you heard that. So it's called. I think it's called um, "Man Ass Water" is the, is the segment. And uh, so I, I walk into the bathroom and he's like, "Thanks, man." Like, All right, thanks, man. And he and I, I sit down and go, "I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him because I realized what I just said, and I just said in water that was on one of my friend's butts." And I'm like, "Dude, man," <laughs> and he knows who he is. And when he comes on, I'm gonna say, "Everybody, this is man ass water right here." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, this is man ass water right here. This guy did it because he won't mind. <laughs> when, he gets, when he comes on, I'm pointing him out and I'm calling him out. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. I mean, if that's not reason to subscribe, folks, and start <laughs> so you can find out the identity of man ass water, it's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, as before we go, I want you to just take a take as much time as you'd like. Tell everybody where to find the podcast, where they can find what you're doing uh, online. Well, my friends, cats and kitties, dudes and dudettes, the home base for the podcast is, of course, s anthony says dot podbean dot com. But the thing is, you can find s anthony says on Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, iTunes, and much like Dan said. If you love the show, if you love Dan's show, if you love my show, would you would you write reviews and say how awesome they are, please? And just like I said in my last episode, Dagnabbit, I don't care if it only involves five stars. You add a six star anyway. Squeeze it in there somehow. I don't care how you do it. Get it done. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm on Twitter at at s, uh, at s Anthony Thomas and at s Anthony says is is the um, podcast specific Twitter. But the main home base is santhonysays.podbean.com. But you can just Google S. Anthony Says. I'm everywhere. Like oxygen. <laughs> well, S. Anthony, thank you so much for taking this time to join me this week. This was a blast. I knew it would be. And, uh, folks, uh, please go find his show. Listen to it. It is absolutely required listening. But, S. Anthony, thank you so much for your time. Dan, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And folks, that'll do it for this week's episode of the Podcast Digest. If you've liked what you heard, please, please, please do that 90-second thing S. Anthony was just talking about. Leave a quick review on iTunes and Stitcher. I, too, will take the sixth star if you push that screen hard enough to make that happen. If you do have feedback, I'd love to hear it. Follow the show at Pod Digest or on Facebook, facebook.com, backslash the Podcast Digest. Shoot me an email, thepodcastdigest at gmail.com. And, of course, you can find all previous episodes along with some exclusive blog posts over at the home of the Podcast Digest, the Podcast Digest.info. Until next week, folks, my name is Dan Lizette, and thank you for listening to the Podcast Digest.